Welcome back to California Cooking. Coming up on today's show, I'm firing up the grill and getting barbecue tips and tricks from a James Beard award-winning pit master. Then the perfect dish for the summer months, a lobster mango and avocado salad. Plus it's cherry season and I'm making a savory side dish using cherries sure to elevate your next cookout. When it comes to grilling this summer, James Beard award-winning chef Rodney Scott loves to share everything he knows about being a pit master and says you can be one too in your own backyard. Rodney showed me how to grill up the most delicious Carolina style spare ribs and honey butter fish. Take a look. Rodney, how you doing? I am great, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I hear uh, when it comes to barbecue, you're the king. Yeah, I do all right. <laughs> <laughs> the real Q masters take it super seriously. It's like religion, right? Yes, it is very serious with us Q masters or pit masters or right. barbecue fanatics, whatever you want to call us. We are very serious about our barbecue. Well, yeah, obviously, you being from the South, South Carolina, everybody's really, I think, takes great pride in where they're from and what kind of barbecue they're all about. Absolutely. A lot of people, in, depending on what region they're from, they take a lot of pride in that particular style from that region. Right. So tell me about the difference then, because like you said, some are ketchup based, some are vinegar based, some are mustard based. Well, you know, there's several different styles of, of sauces and uh, people associated with their barbecues like mustard based, which is mostly a mustard sauce sometimes with some cayenne pepper or brown sugar mixed in. Mm -hmm. Then you have a tomato based sauce that's kind of usually mixed with some apple cider vinegar most of the time, or it, and it tends to be a little thicker. Right. Um, the, the, the Carolina style sauce that a lot of people associate Carolina barbecue with is usually vinegar and pepper, which is like white vinegar, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. That's my particular style of sauce. Okay, and that, I'll be honest, I, and now I've been to the Carolinas many times, I've been to Charleston, I, I'm sure I've had barbecue down there, but I didn't really realize when I made your sauce, I thought, did I do it wrong, right? Because it is, it's vinegar mostly, and then tons of seasoning, but it's liquid. Yes. It's very liquid, liquidy, it's, it's thin, it's not super thick. Yeah. A lot of people, when they think of barbecue sauce, they tend to think of a thick, heavy sauce. That's right. And, and you know, the vinegar sauce is mostly vinegar, like you said, with the cayenne, the black pepper, some sugar, and some lemons. And it's, it's kind of, for me, I can say it's simple, and it works great on proteins. Here's the cool thing about Rodney that everybody needs to know. You started yeah. this barbecue spot, and within a couple of years, you got a James Beard Award for your barbecue? One year after opening and two years after leaving the, the family uh, business, we won the James Beard Award. Wow. And uh, it's life changing. So was it scary to kind of go out on your own to take that, take that step? In the beginning, it was very scary. And then I said, you know what, why not? You know, you, you can't hit a home run unless you swing the bat. So I went ahead and I swung for the fence and you know, it was a hit. And, and to this day, we've been doing great with the business, awesome. meeting a lot of people. What do you think sets your barbecue apart from other barbecue spots in town? Well, personally, I think our barbecue is, it stands out because we are known for doing the whole hog. And of yeah. course, you know, with the whole hog, you have every cut of the animal. So uh, we like to describe it as a difference that you can taste, mm. as opposed to just the shoulder, you can taste the shoulder, ham, belly, you can taste the, the, the loin, all of these different parts that can combine into a sandwich yeah. with different textures and, and, and nice and tender, juicy sauce. Oh my goodness. It's just a simple pit cook difference that you can taste. For those of us on the West Coast who can't go to your restaurant, you, you've got the book. So we, yes. we can do it here. We have the book, Rodney Scott's World of Barbecue. Every day is a good day. Yeah. Um, it tells the story of me growing up as a child all the way up to current day. Uh, it tells of my restaurant experiences, my experiences with food and different ways of preparing certain foods. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just basically gives you my entire world yeah. of barbecue. Yeah. We were going to barbecue together outside and it just so happens next door they decided to have the demolition crew come over and clear the lot next to me today. Wow. So it's like da -da 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 outside. So I brought you it in. I brought it inside. How about some tips for the home pit master? 
What's the tip to lighten, lighten your fire? All right, if you have that little chimney starter thing yes. where you can dump the coals in, you have that. Yep. You can use some basic newspaper or old paper bags if you can get that. Mm -hmm. And one of the key tips is old bacon fat. Really? You know how you save bacon fat? Yeah. Well, then you have pork starting your fire to cook your pork. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That so can't it be help, bad. It helps yeah. a lot. I like to use wood lump. I prefer wood lump because yeah. at the restaurants, we burn our wood down and we use the hot coals to cook our food. Okay. So in the backyard, you're lighting your, your wood briquette, your right. wood charcoal. And once you get it lit and you dump it in your grill and put your rack on, then you're kind of doing pretty much the same thing that we do at the restaurant at home. Smaller scale. So, yeah. When you cook these ribs, and you're gonna cook them for a while, this is like an hour and a half right on the grill. Yeah. How do you do it so that it, it doesn't burn these, these ribs before they're done? Okay, so two things here. One, you wanna make sure your grill is in the neighborhood of about 200 to 250 degrees. Okay. You don't want it super, super hot. Another precaution that every grill person at home wants to do is make sure that you don't have the entire grill hot. So if your grill is this big, you want to make it a little bit hotter on one side. Okay? Sections. Yes. Okay. So never make your entire grill so, so hot that you have no landing spot <laughs> if it's cooking too fast. It's good. You need a <laughs> landing spot. I, I made your rub yesterday and I made your Great. sauce. And you were really specific, and I got two different kinds of ribs. I did get baby back, but I also got the spare rib, which is what you're a fan of, okay? Yes. Now, the spare rib has more meat, right, than a yes. baby back, but they do say it can be a little tougher. Spare rib is definitely a little tougher, mm -hmm. and when you're cooking that spare rib, first of all, you wanna get your ribs, you, you know, you got your whole slab of rib, yeah. and you would have your grill going, right. of course. Yep. And, and you want like one and a half tablespoons of rib rub. Mm -hmm. And while you're sprinkling that rib rub, you want to gently just go all the way over it. <laughs> Sing your favorite song as you go over it. You want to do that on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Now here's the other the question. I know I was oh. reading something about... Membrane. Do yes. I get rid of that? Definitely want to take the membrane okay. off. And I get on this side. And put it down on the grill. Okay. And it's going to cook like that for about an hour and a half. Oh. And the way that you know that it's time to flip that rib mm -hmm. is when you open it up, take a peek, and you would see where the caramelization of the brown sugar that's in the rub yeah. starts to show. The, everything starts to caramelize under there, and it looks great. Yeah. You can see the bones start to come through on the backside. You know, it looks like mm -hmm. little, little hills, rolling hills. And once you get that, you want to take about two to three cups of rod sauce. Okay. You want to mop the back of that rib before you flip it, then flip it over and mop it again. This process we call mop, flip, mop. When the bottom side starts to caramelize, just like the top, you take a pair of tongs and you grab it. And if you pick that rib up, yeah. just grab it on the end. And if you pick it up and it starts to bend uh -huh. like such, yeah. and you see the meat and the bones start to separate a little bit, that baby is ready to eat. Okay. It is done. That, so you walked me through it in a way that I'm not scared. If you could walk me through your trout. Is to take some foil and you want to grab you some fish, about six ounces or so, and you put that foil in kind of like of a sling. And when I say sling, it's kind of like you want to fold the edges up so that you can trap the honey butter. Once you've made your honey butter, you want to get about two tablespoons of Rodney's rib rub. Do I just do a little dusting? There you go, yes. Foil goes on the grill first, put the honey butter on so it can melt and kind of coat a little bit. Yes. I can just kind of put these dollops of honey and butter around. Yes. And then I love the salty, sweet, spicy situation that's happening here. It is, it is so good. <laughs> Once you get all of those components together and you put that, put the entire foil down on your grill. Okay. And for about 30, 35 minutes or so on the grill, this fish is going to cook. You don't have to do anything, but just sit there and look at it if you want. And when it's done, all you do is eat some extra honey butter if you want, yeah. or you can go ahead and eat it from there. And OMG, it is so good. And here's what everybody needs to do. You make your Rodney rub and you just keep yes. it in the pantry. And if you don't know how to make it, Rodney Scott's World of Barbecue, it's in the book. And if you don't feel like making it in the book, 
buy the book anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, we love you and we love all your tips. And I think you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, help us out with our barbecuing skills. That's for sure. This is so good and it's spicy. So if you don't like spice, I would back off on the cayenne a little, but wow, so good. I'm usually so intimidated by ribs. Those were so easy to make and that honey butter fish, wow. And you know, somebody else really enjoyed those ribs too. What do you think? It's hard with a loose tooth, huh? Yeah. How does it taste? It's so yummy, perfect. What do you think? Thumbs up? Yeah, thumbs up. You heard him, so yummy, even with the loose teeth. All right, coming up, I'm making two salads that are great dishes as we head into the summer months. One is a lobster cob salad, the other a Persian style rice salad that's coming up next. Sometimes there's a dish that just sticks with you. This salad I first had while I was on vacation, sitting poolside in Miami, and I still think about it. It's a lobster cob salad with mango and a tangy lime vinaigrette. Just trimming my mangoes, which usually I get the mangoes that have the green skin. But these are the kind they had at the supermarket and they look really juicy and sweet. And the reason I'm using these mango today, uh, I had a salad years ago at the Delano in Miami, Florida, South Beach. And that was one of my favorite, first of all, South Beach, Miami, one of my favorite cities in the whole world. Not that I've been over <laughs> all over the world, but, um, and the Delano, was one of those places every time I'd visit, I'd always wanna go sit outside by the pool and have the salad for lunch. And it had lobster, it was a lobster cob salad. So it had lobster, it had all the things you'd find in a cob, bacon, avocado, blue cheese, and mango, which I think is kind of the Miami vibe, having the mango in there. So that's one of the star ingredients of this cob salad. The other star would be lobster. I'm not a huge lobster person. I, I would never go to a restaurant and order lobster. But for this salad, it's so perfect. And I'm always a little scared cooking lobster, but this was so easy. So you get a double boiler. So a pot, you've got this to steam it. If you don't have that, you can just boil them. But you get the uh, lobster tails at the grocery store. You pop them in there, put the lid on, four minutes. And that's it, so easy. And then to get the shell off, much easier than I thought. Take a really sharp knife, that's it. And you just go down the back and you peel it, just like you would a big shrimp. So really not as scary to cook lobster as I kind of always thought. I have some romaine, I have the pretty purpley lettuce, but whatever you like. I think the one at the Delano actually had spinach. Get a big bowl and just start building your salad. And I think in the summer months, this is such a pretty salad to serve for dinner, or if you happen to have people over and they think it's fancy because there's lobster in it. This would, I think, be great with shrimp too, if you don't want to do the lobster thing. Got our bed of lettuce. Let's chop up our lobster. And I'm just gonna chop it into bite-sized chunks. I'll put it in the middle since that's the star of the show. Lobster, bacon, I'm smelling bacon. So this is how I do the bacon, in the microwave, in between paper towels, crispy, the oil gets into the paper towel and very little cleanup. So just let these rest for a couple of seconds, then they'll crisp up. Let's do some cucumber. I'm just gonna chop it up. Two small Persian cucumbers. And that's, I think, what's so good about cob salads. It's all the textures. There's crunchy, there's salty, there's cheesy. Cucumbers, cherry tomatoes. I'm just gonna cut those in half. I actually think I made this salad for Ari when we first started dating. I wasn't 
as big of a cook then as I am now. I, I think I made him this salad. And then I learned later he doesn't like fruit in his salads, but he didn't tell me that. He just ate it and was happy. And some fresh corn. So this is a little trick for the corn that I remember from Rachel Ray. So kernels don't fly everywhere. She puts that on top of a dish and then chop your corn and it all goes in the bowl as opposed to chasing it around the kitchen. Fresh corn, don't even have to cook it. You can just chop it right off the cob. Especially in the summer, it's sweet. And lobster and corn, they just, they're friends. They work so nicely together. Some blue cheese because cob salads. Yeah, blue cheese, just a little bit. Our bacon, chop that up. Okay, right, bacon, crispy, crunchy, mango. Oh, I just go like this around the pit. Just do some pretty slices like that. Avocado. Let's try to cut it into you know how they always, at restaurants, they fan it out and make it look nice? On to the dressing. I'm gonna start with one scallion lime. Two limes. The thing about emulsifying and making a dressing, a little Dijon mustard helps things come together, like a teaspoon. I'm gonna stir that up. Good pinch of salt. You want dressing to be very flavorful. Honey cracked pepper, and then olive oil. Just keep adding until it starts to form a dressing. It thickens a little. And that's it, you guys. And then I would just do a little pour. But there's my take on the lobster club salad from the Delano Hotel in Miami, Florida. Enjoy. As good as I remember, I'm telling you, so good with all those beautiful colors. Perfect thing to eat this summer. Coming up, cherries are a sure sign that the summer season's here, and I'm making a savory side dish using cherries sure to elevate your next cookout. Coleslaw and potato salads are always great go-tos for your barbecue, but here's a new one to bring to your next backyard barbecue. It's a Persian-style rice salad, perfect served at room temperature, and it's with cherry. It's cherry season. I love cherries so much. and. The other day, I just saw for the first time in the grocery store that they had cherries, so I had to buy them. Um, and this is a recipe that I've never made before, but it was, you know how you'll look through Pinterest and you'll see something, you're like, ooh, I'm gonna save that for when cherries come in season. And that's what I did with this recipe. It's called a Persian cherry rice salad. And if you've never had that, you may think, well, that sounds like a different combination, but it looked so good in the picture. So I'm gonna try to recreate uh, what I saw on Pinterest. So in the bowl here, just a really fine chop on some red onion, and then we're gonna cut the cherries. Now this is a messy job, so I actually don't even do it on my wooden cutting board because it will stain it. So get a plastic cutting board. And if you have one of those cool cherry pitter things, I don't use that. But instead, what you're gonna have to do is just cut all around the pit. A little time consuming, but you know, it's all right. Cherries done in the bowl with the onion, and now I get to break out one of my favorite things that I haven't used in a long time is my pomegranate molasses. It's so good. It's a, to me it's sweet and vinegary and tangy and all that good stuff. It says four tablespoons, but I'm gonna start with two because I'm making a smaller batch. Some salt, sumac, another amazing ingredient, which is a Middle Eastern spice. And it's not spicy, it's just floral and interesting. It's really hard to explain, but it's delicious. To that, olive oil. So basically you're kind of making the dressing for this salad. I'm gonna add the rice. I have this beautiful kind of brown wild rice and I already co I cooked it yesterday, so it's chilled and it's cool. You don't have to wait for it to cool down. And then the rice soaks up all that dressing. Fresh 
crispy cucumber, little Persian cucumbers, and I'm gonna just slice them into rounds going in. And I like the little cucumbers for this, just because they're bite size and I think it looks good when they're round like that. So lots of herbs, parsley, dill, and mint. So a good handful of parsley, a nice big sprig of dill. And the mint, maybe a little more sparing than the other ones, but I'm gonna give this a nice chop. You want a pretty small chop. You don't want any big pieces of herb going in. Give that a stir. Pretty, look at those colors. To that, toasted pine nuts. And you gotta toast them just ever so slightly. They're so nutty and that's it. Our Persian cherry rice salad is complete and I just have a feeling that the longer this sits out at room temperature, the better it's gonna taste. I hope you try it. Okay, it's official. I am obsessed with this rice salad and the longer it sits out, the better it tastes. It just soaks up all those juices. So good. Well, that does it for us. Thank you guys for joining and we'll see you next week. I can't open the mustard. See, just now, now we were gonna barbecue together outside and it just so happens next door, they decided to have the demolition crew come over and clear the lot next to me today. Okay. Make the neighbors jealous. It smells so good.